These brands have no connection. Obviously not. Like they're just putting their names on things, which is so America. Again, when we think about Logan Paul and we think about all those kinds of ways of doing business, guys, just because they're YouTubers doesn't mean they're not Walmart. Shout out to Zoe. How far can Pretty Privilege get you? TikTok star Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> Twenty seven thousand views seven months ago on a huge channel like that. Rip. I was like, that's it. I'm famous. Uh, don't talk to me. <laughs> Guys, it's Charlie, and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first ever YouTube video on my YouTube channel. <laughs> if there was one person who saved the universe in their past life, it must be Charlie D'Amelio because she was dealt with everything anyone could ever ask to be successful: a virally beautiful face and body, every opportunity in Hollywood. Mm. Commercial. Okay, boomer. The top talent agency in the industry. Mm. A book deal. A reality TV show. A TV show. A clothing line. A makeup line. A record deal. But somehow, there is still a way to mess everything up. Mm. This is my favorite. Okay, these videos are some of my favorites. Because what's interesting is this idea that like once I reach a level of fame, I'll always have it. But I think this is the recontextualization all of us need, especially if you're thinking about doing content creation for a living or art for a living, is just because you were a thing one day doesn't mean you're going to be a thing tomorrow. Sustainability, making it last, it's really hard. I think Philip DeFranco is my favorite example of this. Phil is consistent, reputable. He's, you know, he's a nice to watch. And yet Phil is like 5 million subscribers and sometimes doesn't even hit a million on a video. And that just shows you that regardless of how much love and work you put into something, I mean, he's got a whole team behind him. It doesn't mean the viewership will find you. And also YouTube, to be fair, has a hard time pushing out content creators to you unless you watch them consistently. So many things, like so many people I'm subscribed to, I never see their videos because if I miss one week of watching them, YouTube will stop recommending them to me. So unless somebody's a part of your daily schedule, sometimes you forgot they exist, right? need to admit this to you guys i actually do have nipples and i mean that's really like that's all that i can say about this right now so how did the demilio screw up more than 32 million dollars worth a pretty privilege that's exactly the mystery we're going to uncover today but not I, I think the dilemma and I don't, I don't know what she's gonna say and i want to make sure i don't speak um for zoe ahead of time but i will say that i think the demilio's weren't just relying on pretty privilege they were relying on timing right because like this is not my bubble i i don't even think i've ever seen maybe i've seen a tiktok or two but like i'm too old so my tiktok is old people like i watch mostly old people on tiktok i love my tiktok i didn't watch demelio demelio i don't even know how to say your name but in my opinion from my understanding i think that timing played a hu much bigger role in their success because you could see the same thing about um What's the really hot, the really pretty girl who has like the the faces, you know, the one who was in the military but came from an abusive background and all she did was show up on TikTok and do the like little girl face and then all of a sudden she was huge and she even pushed that into stardom. Bella is so beautiful, it like blinds my eyes and at the same time, she's specifically very niche. If you hate the way she looks, you won't like the way she looks and like if you don't like it, you're not gonna like it but that skyrocket, just her face. Do you wanna talk about pretty privilege? Now, the thing is, is that she also has a really interesting history. She's really likable. She's very relatable. She has a lot of um, very interesting family history, right? Chat says she's Bretman, Bretman's cousin. I don't think she's literally Bretman's cousin. I think they mean that in an Asian way. Like, I'm all my cousins are from the Middle East, right? I think that's, I don't think they're literally cousins because I love Bretman Rock. But I don't know if they're actually blood related like that. But either way. They come from a very interesting background, very interesting stuff. I think that she also pushed her niche, niche made sure she made good networking um, connections. Did Demalio do the same thing? Who knows? Okay, let's get into it. Not only that, as your marketing bestie, who graduated top 1% UCLA Business Whoa. Economics with a background in marketing, we are going to explore how pretty privilege can still fail you if you have a terrible break. I love that she's a marketing person on YouTube who's also a content creator in marketing. Like, this is the irony of it all. If she's a content creator, but she went into marketing. Just remember that for my future content creators out there. Brand. And how you, yes you, no matter if you have pretty privilege or not, can build a successful brand 
to help you down your career. And by brand, I don't just mean slapping your name or face on a t-shirt. Branding is about how your future college, future boss, future boyfriend sees you. And I'm creating this series to analyze celebrities from a marketing perspective because many of whom do not recognize the power of influence they have over a generation of young girls. <laughs> I really don't want to work anymore. And I think it's so important to be aware and reflective of the people who are shaping our culture. You know what's interesting is like, she said, I don't want to work anymore. And I know someone out there is like, you don't work as hard as me. I watched a video of Justin Bieber being like completely exhausted from doing show after show after show. Like BTS people, let's use, let's use Korean uh, singers as an example. They are working harder than the average person is ever going to work in their life. And that's why we don't do it. Because it's too much. It's They're fainting on stage. Like, at the end of the day, lots of people make lots of decisions for the kind of work they de- that they do. But I would never want to be a K-pop star. And I know it sounds hard to hear that when you have a job where you're like, I'm breaking my back every day. So are they. You just don't like the aesthetic that they're doing it in. But they are absolutely risking their lives in a different kind of way. And that's the irony of all of our lives. Like, I watched this video where they're like, what's the most dangerous job in the world? Like, or in America. What do you think the most dangerous job in America is that has a high risk of death? And I saw this video on on the internet. And I was watching it with my partner. And I was like, president. And he looked at me and he goes, that's statistics. Or like, that's whatever. He's like, yep, that's the numbers game. I was like, obviously, the most dangerous job in America is president. Obviously, just like numbers wise. And it's kind of funny because that was the answer. But of course, initially, that doesn't you don't think that's the answer because you're not thinking about it from a very specific perspective. And I wasn't like, that's the point of the question. The point of the question is that the answer isn't obvious because you'd think like you're the president. You have all the protection. Why do you need the protection? Most people don't need secret service. Most people don't need protection in their daily life. You know what I mean? So it's like that idea of having an understanding of what a dangerous job is or what a threat to your life could look like. Also, yes, Indiana Jones is in the background because she was scratching the door and being frustrating. But here she is. This is her favorite spot other than in his office. As you know, our offices are next door. But here she is loving her life. Spoiled girlies. Anyway, shout out to Indiana Jones. Okay, let's keep going with the video. But these are the things that I want to keep in mind because it's a different type of heart. It's a type of hard, like even content creation. So many people want to be content creators, but they don't want to work for free for 10 years before they get to do it. That's what I did. Okay. I barely made any money on YouTube. Most of the time that I was doing it, always had to work two to three jobs to keep it up. You know, you never know when it's going to come and come out, but that's the dilemma is it's not a hard job compared to other jobs, but nothing is perfectly hard or easy compared to something else. Some people think being a mother is the hardest job in the world. Maybe. Maybe if you have six disabled children who all have wheelchairs and will never cognitively know more than a three-year-old. Yeah, that sounds pretty hard. I knew a family like that. There's a family I knew in a church growing up who had six kids, all disabled in wheelchairs, and would never cognitively know more than like a young toddler. That sounds hard. Did they keep having babies even though they genetically were guaranteed to have those disabilities in their boys because they're pro-life? Yes. Do I think that's incredibly cruel? Yes. Because those kids... We're not going to have early deaths. They were going to live like that forever, past the life of their parents. So do those parents have a hard life or do they choose to have a hard life? Eh, same, same. It's hard. They chose for it to be hard. They had the option to get their t- tubes tied. They had the option to abstain from sex. And let me say it this way. I'll say it even one way harder. Do you think that's a horrible decision? Why are people having babies in war-torn countries? You know, there's only one way to have a baby, guys. But humans are humans. They're animals. They want to f- And because they want to f- they'll get pregnant. And you want to tell me we're more than animals. And for more than animals, stop and stop having those babies. But I get it. We're all like little horny creatures and in the right situation, whoop, all wisdom goes out the window and all of a sudden, chat says it goes crazy in war times. Oh, yes it does, girl. Despite how terribly the D'Amelio franchise flopped, we will also talk about how they could come back from the Laka brand and the hate they always cry about. I'm upset because I haven't been in any drama. Oh my god. First, when you- she cries like Kim Kardashian. Whoa. I'm upset. Because- <laughs> that looks like that Kim Kardashian crying gif. Because I haven't 
been in any drama. First, oh. you need to understand how the D'Amelios had every single chance to build a billion dollar empire. Charlie D'Amelio, for those who have never heard of a small app called TikTok, good for you, is a Connecticut high schooler who is not a Nepo baby, an Instagram heiress, or a self-made artist. She mm. started creating dance videos on TikTok in 2019 that quickly broke the platform and the Guinness World Record. Yeah, I just feel like... Is this a minor? Am I looking at a child right now? I just feel like this is a decision. Videos on TikTok in 2019 that quickly broke the platform and the Guinness World Record as wow. the first person with 50 million followers on TikTok. Jesus Christ. In April 2020, then 100 million in November 2020. The entire internet and Charlie herself was dumbfounded by the success because while Charlie was a dancer, many mm. have claimed her dances to be mediocre surely it can't be that people are shallow and that the tiktok algorithm prefers a pretty face right not possible at all <laughs> Of course, Renegade became the Charlie D'Amelio dance because she did it so much better than the original choreographer. And of course, the reason Dixie D'Amelio, Charlie's sister, began blowing up too was that her natural talents blew the platform away. Oh. You know, everybody be even teenagers. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. How many bands did I love in high school because I thought they were hot? And I like their music, but you know, that's just how it be. Humans are animals. Oh no, some people are born on the right side of the beauty algorithm and beauty standard and they should embrace it. But as the sisters are dealing with this life-changing fame, which in this day means power, which means money, their parents and new team saw a pot of gold. How exciting. There is so much possibility when the hype is only- Okay, that's a crazy thing to say, chat. Hot people don't make good music. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard someone say. Mariah Carey, Cher, what are you talking about? Whitney Houston, what are we even saying here? Aaliyah, excuse me, what are we even talking about? Hot people don't make good music. Girl, please. Only rising for the girls. They were seen as the model citizens of TikTok and basically had the attention of every teenage girl in the nation. There what? Their audience was girls? I would have thought their audience would be boys. Hold on, you're really missing out on the cringeness of these TikToks because my face is there. There was so much potential here for them to grow into the icons and role models for the next generation of young girls. But no, no, the D'Amelio parents said, heck, we are the new Kardashians. And if you're the Kardashians, then being hot is all you need to build a successful business, right? <gasps> Mmm, wow. And so what happened next was a big, impressive list of business ventures. But if you take a closer look, you'll start to realize that each is very mid and that the team behind them is not just uncreative, but literally throwing random shit at the wall and hoping that one will stick. You know, the Kardashians do the same thing though. The Kardashians have had so many businesses. They really have opened up every kind of business just to see what would stick. I'm serious. Wow. So what this is, is it's a look at your 2021. This is the major things we're focusing on. So we have all partnerships. We have, you know, the different companies you're working with, like, you know, ring lights and starting a clothing company. So, and then you have books and TV shows. Well, this is so big. We need to first look at physical products and then their digital appearances that led to the ultimate downfalls. From mm. 2020 to 2023 alone, they had their makeup line with Morphe, not exactly a hit, then a collaboration drink with Dunkin' Donuts, a fragrance line, a nail polish collection, a mattress, a footwear brand, Jesus, a skincare brand, a popcorn brand, where I don't know which creative genius idea it was to tell the mm. D'Amelios to dress up as Walmart employees in order to promote this relatable people that's a that's a very millennial gen x thing to do right um like simple life you know with paris hilton and nicole richie very common millennial a gen x thing to do like rich people dressing up and being poor for a day oh my god how funny is that i don't know why it's like ellen used to have um uh, Bill Gates on and be like, how much is uh, a toilet paper cost, Bill Gates? And people would think it was so funny that he didn't know how much toilet paper cost.
fun brand. And all they did was to mock the working class where labor was only a fun activity for them. And being so incredibly talented while launching back to back to back to back to back businesses, Charlie D'Amelio of course had the time to write a book in 2020 called Essentially Charlie, The Ultimate Guide to Keeping It Real, which became a New York Times best. Guys, it doesn't, I mean, it does take a lot of books to sell to be a New York Times bestseller. But in this age of technology, I just want to say out loud, it's like 200,000 copies or something to be a New York Times bestselling author. So, of course, all these YouTubers and all these people are going to end up selling their books because, well, she has 50 million followers on TikTok. Uh, it's not going to be that hard to sell that many books in terms of the number. But that's, you know, something to keep in mind. And obviously, as the number goes up, the expectation will go up. But, you know, books are hard to sell even when books were in. Okay seller if and by the way it doesn't mean anything like it all it means i used to think it meant because i used to read every single book on the big, big new york times bestseller it used to mean quality but guys let's be real if the majority loves it does it often mean quality there's this idea that if so many people love it it must be good mm. you know i'm starting to think that might not be the case but also doesn't mean it's not fun was an award for launching the most number of unmemorable businesses, the D'Amelios probably would have won. That's my laundry being finished. If I didn't tell you, you probably don't even know half of these brands existed and some of them deceased. Because honestly, by the speed that these products were launched immediately following the blow up, there is just no way that they were developed with care and passion from Charlie and Dixie. These brands have no connection. Obviously not. Like they're just putting their names on things, which is so America. Again, when we think about Logan Paul and we think about all those kinds of ways of doing business, guys, just because they're YouTubers doesn't mean they're not Walmart. Listen to me when I say this just because they are YouTubers does not mean they are not Walmart. And this is the part I've never understood about judging Logan Paul. Judge him the way you would judge Walmart and then be upset. But don't judge him the way you would judge, you know, the Vlogbrothers. Like they're doing totally different things. Like YouTubers like the Demalios or TikTokers that are doing the Walmart game, they're not playing the same game as these cute small YouTubers that are hand making their crafts and selling them on Etsy. Yes? different game. So judge Walmart the way you're going to judge Walmart in the way that we all do. But like, they are not the same. No, no, no. Wait, H3 too? No, no, no. H3 is not Walmart. H3 is, is, um, uh, H3 is kind of like, um, uh, do you mean H3, the YouTube channel? Or do you mean Teddy Fresh? Cause Teddy Fresh is more like, uh, like free people or something else. No, no, no. Hassan, you guys, no, you're obviously making me a, like, like YouTubers like Hassan and H3, H3, like they're middle, they're milli, they're not Walmarts because they're not normie enough. Yeah. Like Demalio and Logan, they're going for like normie numbers. They want big numbers, right? Big, 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 big numbers. But I would say that H3 and Hassan and all those people, well, Hassan's different. He gets all of his money from subscriptions and sponsorships. H3 is kind of the same, but Teddy Fresh, Teddy Fresh is more like, I don't know, like free people maybe, or what's Teddy Fresh? What's a clothing brand? Because Teddy Fresh is a clothing brand, right? Like people wear Teddy Fresh and are not fans of Ethan and Hila. They don't even know about Hila, right? So it's different. Oh, Good Mythical Morning is Walmart. I feel like Good Mythical Morning is like NPR, I don't think they're Walmart. I think they're more like NPR. Does that make sense? Like everybody knows what it is, but you have to be niche to follow it. That's how I think about it because Logan is selling like caffeine to your children. That's so Walmart. NPR is trying to give you something like, yes, Good Mythical Morning is more like Target. I agree. I think Good Mythical Morning is more like Target. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. See, that's it right there, baby. I love this version of category. This is how my brain categorizes. I'm like, mm, Whole Foods. Ooh, I think Good Mythical Morning is like Target. Logan Paul is like Walmart. Who's like, Wal like yeah, who's who's like the, the Whole Foods or the, mm, or maybe Good Mythical Morning is more like Trader Joe's. Yeah, something like that, you know? 
If Walmart filmed a dead body in the forest, I would be concerned. Oh, they would definitely post it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. With them, like huh? why shoes, why popcorn, why mattress? It's just slapping the Demelio label on a bunch of consumer goods that are very mid themselves. Really? Who is the Costco? I kind of feel like I'm gonna be real. Like the Kardashians might be Costco. Brittany, are you like a farmer's market? I think, I think I, I, yeah, like a farmer's market or like an Etsy. It's very specific. Like uh, it's very niche. It's very specific. You love it. If you love it, you hate it. If you hate it, it's not for the general public, you know, something like that, you know? Yeah. Maybe, or like a, or like a, a, a swap meet. <laughs> If you, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm like a swap meet. You know what I mean? You, you guys ever go to swap meets as a kid? Whew. Footwear is recommended by doctors to treat broken ankles. Don't say, that you can't that's... say that. I don't care if you like the Kardashians or Hailey Bieber. Yes, they also mm. launched and flopped brands, but the brands that we will remember <laughs> and rave about are the brands that they care about and rave about themselves. Kim Kardashian. Oh my gosh, yes, stop it. It's like a slam poetry coffee shop. Let I want to be at the local coffee shop that like people go to. I want to be the local. That's my dream is I just want to be the local coffee shop, you know? Kardashian is known for her iconic body. So what does she launch? Skims, mm -hmm. a shapewear company that has quality products that could sell even on their own. Kylie Jenner, known for her lips. So Mama Chris got her to launch Kylie Cosmetics. Hailey Bieber, the woman is constantly showing her glowy skin. And each launch is super creative and tied to her personally. Mm. Emma Chamberlain, mm. vlogged with coffee for four years. It just makes so much sense to have a coffee company and she has killer creatives. Alex Earls merch, very on brand with her personality. The fact that you don't even know the name of the quote unquote brands launched by the D'Amelios shows oh. you how disconnected they are from these brands. And it is so funny to read Charlie D'Amelio's brand inspiration for the shoes as quote, we are always in heels, we are walking carpets, we've done all the uncomfortable blister filled shoes before. So it's been really nice to be able to look into our closets and see, hmm, what are we missing? And mm. what do we have that we can make better clearly extremely relatable to their teenage girl fan base who walk in heels and go to carpets all day and clearly the dream shoes for the teenage boys who follow them because of their hotness i love you so much we love you so much <laughs> charlie let's go i love you charlie you're the go it's crazy how their entire marketing team never gave a single thought to who the targeted demographic is because it is not women in their 20s and 30s with actual purchasing power who won't want to wear these hot pink or electric blue pumps to work, which is probably a hard concept for the Demelo sisters to grasp because they never had to work a single day since they had enough money to do whatever they want since 17. And at this point, yeah, I wonder if they made a mistake because I saw the Demelios on Selling Sunset uh, or was it Selling OC? I don't remember. The O group represented the Damalios in the rental they had. So I saw them on TV recently. I think it was Selling Sunset, but I don't know because the the brothers, Jason and Brett, they also have an OC show. And the Damalios were there and they're looking to like downsize and do things differently. The girls want to go in their own separate way and the parents want to downsize. But I'm always concerned with these kinds of like fame things because I always wonder if people can keep it going if they're smart enough to keep it going if they were good enough with their money but yeah keeping a brand going is hard I mean if the Kardashians are poor because they outlive their you know what I mean like who knows though because Kim been at a lot of ditty parties so you know what who knows who knows it is apparent that the main issue is the D'Amelios don't know why people follow them and frankly it is hard to answer oh, that question as oh very interesting. And he still only know Charlie D'Amelio as a famous TikToker who dances and not much more. Surely, digital appearances should help, right? <laughs> On the personal branding side, although it seems like the D'Amelio family has done so much since Charlie became famous on TikTok, everything they worked on somehow only made them less and less relevant and less likable. Don't get me wrong, I respect the hustle of the family, where they really tried to emulate the Kardashian grind and did everything possible to stay relevant. <laughs> but they do not understand the full price of monetizing 
your family, and what it truly takes for a family to become a money printing machine like the Kardashian clan. Either their team is very lazy mm. or has no creativity. Since blowing up, the D'Amelios launched a podcast because every other influencer under the sun did mm -hmm. called Two Chicks Podcast. Oh, God. Yo. Oh, good point. Taylor Swift is the Costco. You're right. Taylor Swift is Costco, right? They made a total of 27 episodes before asking the question, is this what the girls actually want to do? And do they have anything to talk about? Dixie began doing music and so did Charlie. They had their family YouTube channel, which had a lot of backlash since the first episode where the girls were seen as extremely rude. And in spite of a private chef made meal, Dixie threw it up in front of everyone and Charlie said it's better to get dino nuggets. Sometimes happens when Private chef, gross, but dino nuggets, good. It's the tism. Oh god. So dramatic. <laughs> Do we have any dino nuggets? Ew. At this point, the Demelu brand was already- Yo, I got some chicken nuggets in the freezer and now I kind of want them out of touch with their audiences who likely don't live in a large mansion with private chefs mm. but that's okay they don't have to build a relatable brand if they want to be more aspirational like taylor swift or billy eilish they could keep their mystique and stop doing the mediocre family content but no mm. the team behind the demelios wanted them to be the kardashians and put them on a reality tv show even after the youtube family channel backlash while they lacked the very essential elements of the kardashians to be interesting oh my god i'm gonna cry my diamond earrings. tapes celebrity scandals divorces uh -oh. pregnancies the d'amelias are just too normal and unproblematic compared to oh very interesting problem we're too healthy i saw this message in a comment on a Diddy video that said, you know, I used to want to hang out with these celebrities, but now, nah. And I'm like, exactly. Think about how much dysfunction you have to have to be a Car Kardashian at the end of the day. At the end of the day, thank your stars. You are so healthy. You can't ride the wave into fame of reality TV. Or to other celebrities. The biggest drama they could pull <sighs> is Charlie and Dixie hating each other. No, I think it's so cute that you riding on my coattails like really worked out for you. No, I mean like that was your whole life. I mean, two years compared to 18, it's like really different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is so hard to watch because it's not authentic. I was caught off guard and then expected to be like, oh my God, this is so perfect. You know what? Why don't you put the song on my album? We could do it together. And probably did damage their relationship as a family. Mm. What the hell just happened? Like I thought you were the only person I could really trust in the world. Mm. That's not fair to me. So, how are we Girl, have you been following what's happening with Tia and Tamara? The internet doesn't deserve the privacy and intimacy between your families. If you're for real, like, listen to me when I say my family, there's a reason my parents and stuff don't come on this channel. Because at the end of the day, like, I'm not willing to throw my family under the bus, fucking money or views. Like, I would be devastated if that's how it went with my sister. Like, what? Like, she is my best friend. There's no way. I don't care what the the problem is we got to work it out sometimes you got a special sibling i just thank god it's not one of my it's not my sister because i only got one of them you know are we supposed to live with each other anymore in addition the fact that almost every single episode was about the sisters facing hate from people on the internet due to their massive following and massive presence online is very jarring for the audience not saying that the hate they're dealing with is not valid or important but to their viewers who don't understand a life of never needing to work since 17 having the luxury of time to cry repeatedly in a mansion and complain is very off-putting where there's a lack of awareness of privilege. The biggest challenge they have to face in life is the hate that come from having hundreds of millions of followers where many cannot even afford a roof over their heads and have to stress about where the next meal is. Mm. The impression of Charlie and Dixie not being appreciative of the capital, money, and power they have is not only unrelatable, but also unlikable and if they're building brands after brands after brands mm. that depend on their personal brand and people oh. liking them then if people don't like them then of course the brands they release oh wait but i'll tell you the difference between again tia and tamara doing it and ethan and moses doing it because there is a difference because we covered that sorry maiden's chat made me realize because maiden said i find public family feuds super distasteful i will say the difference and i hate to say it this way 
Tia and Tomorrow's feels, and maybe I'll cover it later in this week because I can't cover it now. It doesn't make sense. But theirs feels more real than Ethan and Moses's. Whatever Moses is doing, he's being a bitch about it. It's like not real. It, it's not a real issue. It's only an issue because it feels good. But I'm telling you it's not a real issue. And because it's not a real issue, it becomes one. But it feels less real to me. But like like this, this feels less real because it's not real. Like, but Tia and Tamara, like it's, there's a lot of pain there that's like deeply like, oh, this is private, private. Like this is private, private. But what Ethan and Moses are going through, it's not that deep. And that's why it feels less of a big deal for it to have it in public. So I think there's like, it's kind of interesting and we know about it because it happened online. But yeah, like Yaya says, it's deep resentment between sisters. Deep resentment is very difficult, especially if you grew up watching Sister, Sister, if you, especially if you grew up with them. It It's very different. So yeah, no, 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 no. Shadow B says Gwyneth Paltrow would be an obvious candidate for Whole Foods. No way, man. She's a uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is um, Arwen, Erwin, our, our Erwin, the really expensive place in LA that charges $35 for strawberries. That's who Gwyneth Paltrow would be. Overpriced LA shit. I said what I said. Every few months flop, in addition to how each product has no soul or passion. Since the very start, except for maybe Charlie and her dancing, there was not a soul or passion in every project that Demelius touched on. Demelio footwear is recommended by doctors to treat broken ankles. Don't say that. You can't say that. I'm not sure if Dixie Demelio even wanted to be a TikTok star or singer, while always being overshadowed by Charlie. It's always your time to shine. When the entire enterprise was born because of the lucky or perhaps unlucky pretty privilege without a soulful connection, it is doomed to fail. As soon mm. as the halo effect of a pretty face or body gets tiring, and loses its shine. All in all, I do think Charlie and Dixie are sweet girls and handle way too much pressure from their team and perhaps even their parents who just want to milk the f out of their fame oh. and youth. But oh. like I said before, a brand cannot just be built in one day. And you can't just launch 20 things in four years hoping one will stick Damn. if you don't have an ounce of passion for any of them. Mm. So what does make sense for the D'Amelio brand and how could they create something sustainable without further decreasing their likability? First, they need to make a very conscious decision of whether they want to be influencers or celebrities, which are two Ooh, love this distinction. Two very separate concepts. If they just want to play a role that is aspiration. You know what? I should have gone into marketing. Maybe marketing is like why I like how like specific it is because these are different. Influencers, celebrities, like movie stars, TV stars, like actors versus like all of these things are very nuanced and different. Man, that's why I like marketing videos. I think I watch so many marketing videos because I just think it's so interesting. Oh, wow. No, then don't overexpose themselves by appearing on every show mm. network possible. Keep the mystique. And if they want to be influencers, they need to be way more self-aware and aware of what is normal outside of their multi-million bubble. Stop pretending oh. that they are- Bubble, 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 butt, bubble, 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 butt. We love a bubble. We love a bubble. Are just rewinding it deep. and if they want to be influencers they need to be way more self-aware and aware of what is normal outside of their multi-million bubble mm -hmm. stop pretending that they are just a normal family only worth 32 million dollars in a mansion and be more respectful towards the audience that they've been cashing out on and stop contradicting themselves by stop pretending to be dramatic and problematic in their shows for the sake of views and just stay true to who they are and maybe they don't care about mm. music popcorn mattress and that is okay mm. which brings up second they need to stop launching brands the yeah. next brand launch needs to be something so thoughtful and something they absolutely love because so much trust has already been lost see it made sense when graham stefan launched a coffee brand because he always started off his video with like i made this coffee at home which me too by the way by the way i am that person in the family just like my mother where i'm like guess how much it cost me to make dinner for everybody guess how much it cost me to make dinner for everybody you know how chicken breast is like the queen of gym bro eating i have been eating 
chicken breast. It took me a really long time to find a meal that I like. I've been making sandwiches. And honestly, let me tell you, it's fucking good. And I'm absolutely losing weight, like not weight, fat. I'm gaining weight. I'm actually good on my weight, but I'm getting muscle, losing fat. It's like really nice. And I have a healthy balance, vegetables, all these things, healthy fats, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that made me like finally get on chicken breast was I found a recipe that works. So me and my partner have been eating like the same thing every day. We make lunch together. We have dinner together and we've been eating this chicken breast in our own way. He likes tortilla. I like whole wheat bread. We've been like really managing the, and it's absolutely Im- like improving our bodies. Like we feel good. We're eating a lot of protein where even when we're hungry at the end of the night, we have room for other things because there's no calories in chicken breast. Like there's so many positives, but it makes sense that when you're a gym person, maybe you launch a a, a connection with like protein or like working out like Gymshark is like the number one thing everybody uses, right? It goes along with the brand. And it's so interesting when I think about that in my own life, like what are you using in your real life that incorporates like into the brand, but also what makes sense? What's the association? But also, oh my God, like it throws me when people have all of these opportunities, but they can't manage it because it doesn't feel like they know what they're doing there. Like if I was just eating chicken breast without any thought about why I was eating it, it wouldn't make sense. I'd just be like, why the fuck am I eating this? Everything has to make sense. I don't know why I thought about my chicken breast, by the way. I don't know why this relates. But I was thinking about like this thing we do, we hate it until we do it and it makes sense. Once it makes sense, it's so easy. Once you can make sense of things, it is so much easier. Does that kind of make sense? Anyways, hold on. They need to let... They need to stop launching brands. The next brand launch... Okay, hold on. So it made sense that Graham Stephan did coffee. And it made sense that if you're a good gym person, you do gym shark. And it makes sense. So, okay. So I was thinking about, wait, why did I correlate this to my chicken breast? Damn it. Hold on. I was thinking about food, chicken breast. Oh, I think it was, okay. It was what I was saying. When you find a re like the actual reason why you're doing something, then it feels authentic and good, but otherwise it just feels like a chore. And it feels like the Damalios made a chore out of their brand. And that must feel like shit, bro. Oh my God. Chat says I'm stuck on red onions lately. Bro, the way I eat onion and red onion, obsessed, obsessed. And it feels like they're eating chicken breast every day and they don't even like it. And that sucks. Have you ever tried to eat chicken breast when you don't want to eat it? It is like torture. It's like the most torturous thing I've ever done in my life, like from a first world privilege position. It's so awful. And that's what the Damalios feel like. They feel like they're eating chicken breast and trying to tell you it's good. They made chicken breast or they made their brand look more desirable than Liver King made raw liver. And that's saying something. Okay. Brittany, it's Damalio, not Damalio, by the way. See how, see how I feel about that? It's all the same, girl. It's all the same. We're all going to die needs to be something so thoughtful and something they absolutely love because so much trust has already been lost they need to let every milli ounce of the next product to show that they poured their soul and their heart into it and maybe they're mm. not passionate about anything right now which is also okay do some soul searching first then develop the product that their audiences actually need and to be honest if they don't care about products they don't need to create one yeah. there is already enough money to be made from working with existing brands that align with them i want to know their original inspiration for making those videos was it just to impress high school boys accomplished was was it for something else you know sometimes it's not meant for you sometimes the content creation isn't meant for you in a way maybe the high life is maybe it's not the content creation they wanted maybe it was just the lifestyle that came with it or maybe it wasn't even that it's really stressful as a content creator to know how to like survive in this capitalistic hellscape and to be true to yourself. It is like one of the most exhausting things as a neurodivergent queen I've ever had to do in my life because it's always hard to be like, this is what I want to do. But like, you don't get to do what you want to do in that same way. Like I do whatever I want every day, but within reason. I can't actually do exactly what I want to do because you still have to pay tax and you still have to live in the world and you still have to show up to work and you still, there's a lot of weird stresses that come with content creation because you are the marketer, the editor, the talent all at the same time and you're just hoping it works. So it's kind of interesting that they fell into this thing, but they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah.
them. Third, not sure about Dixie, but Charlie's initial dream was related to dance and her going on Dancing with the Stars was a great move. It just aligns so well with mm. who she is at the core. Yeah. Instead of starting drama, just to start drama with Dixie about pursuing singing. Many people initially followed Charlie because of the positive energy she brings. And maybe from dance, she could create a product that finally connects with her. That helps solve problems for her as a dancer. Like gear that prevents dance injury that could eventually be pushed out mm. to a broader... Oh, that's good. I was thinking leggings or clothes you can dance in, shoes that are comfortable, um, something like a, a drink you can drink before you do your dance workout. Athletic market. Or dance of leisure that's extremely... Yes, girl, yes. ...durable yet comfortable and cute during practice that could eventually become its own clothing line. Instead of pop corn and mattress. With that being said, although times have changed and the D'Amelio sisters are highly unlikely to regain that surreal level of mass attention again, all they need to do is to build a stronger connection with their existing mm -hmm. massive following. 154 million followers. 154 million followers. 154. 154 million followers. 154. 100 million followers 154 million followers whoa instead of treating them like cash printing machines to feed soulless products to and stop doing and saying problematic off-handed things or complain about their privileges to be further disliked i really don't want to work anymore pretty privilege can't get you far but cannot last mm. a lifetime ultimately it still comes to good intentions authenticity and hard work to build a long lasting brand wow. which i do believe the d'amelio sisters are capable of mm -hmm. and can have a rise to their careers again if they choose to use their influence for good impact that's how to grow real influence instead of a pretty follower account let me know your thoughts if yeah, you think the great, great, brand great. was a flop or not and comment below which celebrity you'd like me to analyze next through a marketing perspective this is your marketing bestie zoe unlimited share this video for impact Great video. Love the video. Let's look at the chat or the comments. Do you think the Demolio brand is successful or not? Which pop cultural girl icon should we analyze next? That's from her. Let's see who people want us to do. Doja Cat, Ariana, uh, Madison Beer, Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift. Oh, very big names. Big names. Big names. See? Not content creators. Though, uh, yeah, not content creators. Like singers and actresses. Interesting. Okay. I never understood why Charlie didn't focus on selling dance-related products. It seems like a natural fit that would align perfectly with her brand. Their parents are deaf pushing two young girls to be celebrities for themselves, which is pretty sad. Kardashians became famous before social media. The only way we could see into their lives was by watching their show. Not everyone posts on everything on TikTok. There's no need to watch a show. Well, you know what's interesting is I watched like the first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, I think, during COVID. I was like, I'm going to try this. I didn't get past the first three episodes but i was watching it maybe i should maybe that would be like an interesting watch i don't know but it was like them trying to get on tv them selling to the people why they should be on tv and they had like a little clothing boutique and i was thinking about that like how many lives have these people lived and again if you're playing the game of wanting to be walmart like ksi mr beast and uh, logan just launched um like a lunchable competition Lunchly, I think it's called. And that's like a very specific game. Like the last thing I want to do is have a child audience or think about giving them Lunchables. Like just think about where your headset, your mindset is at. You're like a Walmart. You're thinking, how do I get into schools? Like they're going to go and try to get into school lunches. Like that would be the dream to them. I'm not thinking about that. You're not thinking about that. Damalio is not thinking about that. So you have to think about well, what, what do you even want? I'm like, I'm like a very like, I would just love to be like kind of a D-list celebrity in a small town where nobody knows who I am, but I also kind of like wrote something or like I was a content creator or this is like a cool job in general or I'm actually just making stuff that I like. Like I'm not trying to be some fucking, I built a billion dollar company and I'm in Walmart and all of school's kid lunches and you know, that's a big deal. That's like a totally different game. So Kim, Kim and Paris are playing different games, but Kim in particular She's playing a very specific game. 
And so then you have to ask yourself in your own life, what game am I playing? Whether it's to be the best teacher on campus, to make sure like math classes are more accessible to disabled kids. You want to work in your local church and you want to make sure everybody can attend like service on the weekends. You're a person who's trying to get girls more access to tampons and bathrooms. Like you have so many games to play in life. I just want to be the best mom possible. I just want to be the best truck driver. I just want to try to be, you know, the greatest barber. Like there are so many ways to live in the world. There's so many businesses to start or so many ways to join a good business that's already established. But these are content creators in a bubble that are, cre they want to be the next competition. And that's interesting. There's something interesting about that. Or actually, okay, you think about, um, Think about The Daily Show and think about Jon Stewart. And think about how Jon Stewart starting The Daily Show. Maybe this is like very Gen X millennial of me because I used to watch everything from Jon Stewart. Every person that became famous off of Jon Stewart and that bubble. Colbert. Um, oh, my God. I'm forgetting everybody's name. Everybody and their mom. Like uh, Oliver. Like everybody. Everybody became famous from Jon Stewart starting. So it's kind of in Trevor Noah. Exactly. It's like all these people from this one person's decision to be a, the it person and to some extent. And then SNL is another example of how people sort of like get in. Like that's a dream for some people. Some people they are like, I just want to be on SNL. What is the thing that you really want and what are you going to do to get it? But also, are you being realistic with those dreams? It's hard to say. I know people, again, who are literally doing it. And people are like, why aren't you being realistic with your dreams? Don't listen to those people. If you literally have it and you know exactly where you were going and you know exactly how to play that game, listen only to yourself, not the haters. I mean, there are people right now who are like, do you ever think you're going to be successful as a content creator? I'm like, bro, I literally do a full time. What do you want from me? It's not good enough for them because they want you to be the Demolios. I'm not trying to be fucking Costco. I'm trying to be a little boutique kiosk in middle of town. I'm trying to be a little coffee shop that runs for 50 years. And when it closes, people are like, that coffee shop was really meaningful to me. Thanks. I'm not trying to be fucking Costco. But for some people, unless you're Costco, what's the point? And for me, in my head, I'm like, if Costco is the only dream, what's the point? And that's the difference. Know the game you're playing. Because if you know that game, everything else will make much more sense and be much easier to figure out. It feels like the Demolios don't know what game they're playing. But they fell into one, a very successful one, but they just didn't know how to win it. Makes sense. They were kids. They were literally children. Kind of makes sense they wouldn't know what to do with it. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool